To tell the tale of the heroes of Persia, the stories of the adventurers who rode across the desert sands, we must begin in a darker place. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, something in my throat. In ancient days, there was a king among the Arabs known as Murdas, and he was kind and just. He possessed thousands of cows and sheep and horses, and gave milk freely to anyone who needed it. And this king had a son, a son he doted on. But as is often the case, this beloved son did not inherit the kindness of his father. This young man was named Zahak, and though brave, he was turbulent with a dark disposition. Then one day, he met a man named Iblis, and they became fast friends. Eventually, Iblis said to Zahak, There is something you must know, but first, you must swear to tell no one. And despite him sounding like a straight-to-VHS Disney villain, Zahak swore. Iblis then said with a grin, Your father is all that stands in the way of ruling the world. Rid yourself of him, and the world will be yours. But Zahak still had some shred of virtue, and so he initially objected to the idea of spilling his father's blood. Iblis was persistent, though, and eventually his sultry voice convinced Zahak, who then asked him how the deed should be done. Elated, Iblis told him he would take care of everything. So before dawn, he dug a pit deep and wide, along the orchard path where Murdas would walk every morning. And when Murdas fell in the pit, Iblis filled it with soil and walked away. Zahak then took the reins of power. He was king now, lord in his land. Then one day, a cook showed up and offered his services. The king took him on, for he said he knew many dishes the king had never tried. And for the first time, the flesh of animals became a regular part of meals. And Zahak the king dined on this flesh and was delighted. He offered the man a boon, any request he might make. The cook asked only one thing, that the king let him kiss him on the shoulders as if they were dear friends. Now, personally, I would be suspicious of anyone that was like, the one thing I want in this world is to kiss your shoulders. But hey... Takes all kinds, am I right? Zahak, on the other hand, wasn't suspicious at all, and so granted this request. So the cook came up and kissed his shoulders, and as he did, a wonder and horror such as one had never seen before occurred. Two great serpents rose out of the shoulders of the king where the chef had kissed him. Flailing in horror, he grabbed his sword and struck off the heads of the snakes, but they simply grew again from his shoulders. And in this confusion, the chef, who had all along been Iblis in disguise, vanished. The king summoned all of his doctors and healers to give him some kind of remedy, but each cure that was offered failed. At last there appeared a doctor, who was known to no one, who said, These snakes were fated to appear. Do not cut them back. <laughs> you must instead placate them by allowing them to feed. Feed only on human brains. In time, they will surely die from this food. <laughs> and yeah, this wise doctor was of course Iblis. For a thousand years after this, Zahak reigned as undisputed master of the world. And each night, two young men were brought to the palace and killed their brains made into a meal for the snakes. In this time of darkness, demons flourished and wicked magicians held sway. But one night, Zahak had a dream. He dreamt of three warriors who smote him with a mace that's head was the shape of an ox. So he summoned the sages of the land to tell him the meaning of this dream. The bravest among them came forward and said, We are all born to die. Those who live must pass. So it is with kings as with peasants. Your time is coming to an end. There is a man named Feridun who will slay you with an ox-headed mace and take your throne. Somehow still unaware of his own evil, Zahak asked the sage, But why would this man hate me so much? And the sage replied, 
His father will die at your hand, and he will be given succor by a magical cow. This cow you too will kill, for these things shall he hate you. Zahak fell from his throne at the news and fainted. The sages all fled while the getting was good. And when Zahak woke, he ordered that Feridun and his parents be hunted across the land. Nothing like leaning into a prophecy hard, I guess. Far away, Feridun was born as was the rainbow-colored cow that would one day give him succor. Soon, though, word of Zahak's hunt came even to their part of the world, and Feridun's father fled, only to be caught and slain by Zahak. So his mother entrusted Feridun to a local grovekeeper and owner of the magical cow, who would raise him for years, feeding him off the magical cow's milk until there too he had to flee. For Zahak had at last discovered where he was hiding. Not finding the boy, Zahak checked off prophetic box number two and slew the cow. But fear of this missing boy now possessed his mind, and Zahak's actions became more brooding. At last, sitting on his ivory throne with his turquoise crown upon his head, he gathered the wise and the good of his realm and said to them, I have an enemy in the shadows. I must protect myself against at all cost. I must increase the size of my army. I will add to it demons as well as men, and the two shall serve together. I must do this immediately, and you all shall approve, and you will sign this statement saying that I have done nothing but sown the seeds of righteousness so that none will object to this act. Okay? Cool? Cool? Cool. But one among those assembled before him, a humble blacksmith, shouted, You are not just! My son's brains have gone to feed your serpents! You are not a king, but a monster! And when the king ordered him to sign the statement, instead he tore it up and stalked out of the palace. Zahak sat there, stunned. As Zahak pondered his own evil, at last coming to realize what he had become, the blacksmith marched to the town square and mounted his blacksmith apron upon a spear to serve as a standard for the army he would raise to liberate Persia. And for centuries, this would serve as the banner of Persia, and each great king that came to the throne would add jewels to this simple blacksmith's apron. The people followed this banner to the mountain where Feridun fled, and the blacksmith cast him a mace with an ox head. Then together, they set out to rally the people to take vengeance upon Zahak. Zahak himself fled towards India, slaughtering thousands for the sake of his dark rites. But Feridun seized Zahak's capital, his treasury, and his harem, forcing him to return. But when King Zahak did return to his capital, the whole city took arms against him. Even civilians, out of hatred for his reign, threw bricks and roof tiles at his men. So. Zahak took a different approach and infiltrated the castle himself. But when he was inside, he spied Feridun with his favorite consort, and jealousy overtook him. He unsheathed his dagger and went not to slay Feridun, but the woman he was with. Feridun, though, leapt forward and sent his ox-headed mace crashing down like an earthquake upon Zahak's head. But then a strange thing occurred. An angelic figure descended and told Feridun not to slay Zahak. A different fate was to meet him. He would be imprisoned under a mountain, chained, bound, nails piercing his body, but alive for all time. So with that, the Arab people were free, and great dynasties could be established. But somewhere in the darkness, Zahak still waits. <laughs>